This is your host, T. This is your host, Tia. Welcome back to another exciting episode of the Top 10. Why? Geek Vibes Nation. Geek Vibes Nation. 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 The Top 10. The Top 10. Too much Django. <laughs> and hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to another amazing episode of the Top 10 by Geek Vibes Nation. I'm your host, Tia, and Brittany and I were having quite a laugh before the recording of this podcast because Brittany has actually never seen, believe it or not, Django Unchained. So I had to start off the podcast with that. (laughs) Technically, technically, I have seen it now. It just took all of until yesterday. The last (laughs) night. (laughs) <laughs> you know what better late than never the next thing that we'll get her to watch is venom finally so <laughs> i know but he's so on that i really want you to watch it Brittany. we do comic book podcasts it's it's important um but <laughs> how are you this morning I'm good. Like I said, you know, the cats are always just instantly like, oh, she's trapped. Good. Good. <laughs> this is our home now. Because <laughs> Django is really good. Uh, the language is very strong in it. Makes you flinch yeah. a little there. But as for that, like, the action's so good. And I love Django. I love his, like, his love of theatrics. The, the, the dramatics, as he said. And his friendship with uh king schultz it was adorable i'm just sad how it ended (laughs) just shake his hand you know like obviously jamie fox has done a lot of like fantastic performances throughout his life um i'm sure that people could probably say all of these other type of movies that he's done that are obviously like oscar worthy like because i believe he played um Ray Charles, right, in a movie? I'm not sure, but he's Uh, really uh, good in Baby Driver. Well, so I was going to say that while I'm sure that other people will probably spout out, you know, Ray Charles or, like, other sort of roles as his best roles, but to me, my favorite roles of Jamie Foxx are Django Unchained and Baby Driver. I think that those two definitely rank really high for me for Jamie Foxx parts. Was he in Sleepless? Yes, he was. Yes, he yeah, was. Okay. He was in, yeah. <laughs> I like Jamie Foxx. I'm, I'm going to say that I like Jamie Foxx. He's a good actor. Um, but this is not a Jamie Foxx podcast. Uh, this is actually, unfortunately, I was thinking actually before this that at some point we should do a, speaking about Django Unchained, a top 10 Christoph Waltz roles. I mean, I'm all about that lifestyle. Thank you. That That's what we're doing. You don't get a choice. That, that's how it's going to be. Next week. Next week. Next week, we'll do Top 10 Christoph Waltz. It's been a while since we've done an actor-centric show, and I think that that would be a good one. There's plenty of fantastic roles to pick from. But this week's is actually the Top 10 Most Destructive Superheroes And I put in little parentheses, live action. Because obviously if we go by the comics, there's going to be so many other characters. And I would feel like maybe I wouldn't have necessarily the comic book knowledge to put out the ones that I'm sure. Like, I don't want to be the case where we do one and people are like, where's this? Where's that? And it's like, oh, because I don't really read the comics. I don't know those characters. So... If it's all right with everyone, we're doing live action. (laughs) Can we do uh, live action or animated films? Yes, we can do animated as well. I just wanted to... Animated film. I just didn't want to have it where it was... Like, we could do, you know, like, film adaptation, right? There you go. Just because, again... I know that there are characters in the comics that are probably super, super destructive, 
And I don't know them because I don't read really the comics, so I didn't want to make people angry. You get me? No, I, I get you, girl. I get you. Okay, so top ten most destructive uh, superheroes in um, film, right? Okay, there you go. Boom. All right. <laughs> oh, oh, <sugar> <laughs> I can't believe you actually did that, <laughs> Brittany. Brittany. Yeah, what? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Brittany, that. by the way, has been insanely, like, busy being talented. She has, you know, I'm going to let you uh, take that over. You need to let the audience know what you've been doing because I want to die about how cute half of this shit is. Oh, my gosh. So, like, my thing is, like, I never got a chance to really get into, like, arts and crafts type stuff. But whenever, uh, I think, you know, what inspired me a lot is, do you remember when we went to Conway to the convention there? Uh, and we, and, and, you know, they have all those booths and stuff. I remember someone was selling perler bead art. Like, uh, I think it was either pins or keychains and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's really cute. And then as I grew, you know, like the years went by, I kept seeing stuff and I was like, well, it's just you follow a pattern. And so then I started doing it. And then I was like, okay, these are nice, but, you know, they're just images. What else could I do with it? And uh, one of my friends at work was like, oh, I turned one of the ones you gave me into a magnet, like for a fridge. I was like, oh, that's cool. And then I was like, oh, but. But if I get the mini beads, I can make art, like like little uh, keychains. And for some reason, I was like, well, now I can make jewelry with it. I can make earrings. And so I made a little onigiri uh, earrings for Tia. I found a pattern online, and I was like, you know what? This is mine now. I'm going to wait for that in the mail, and I'm going to wait for my Ronin uh, Perler bead art in the mail. So you got those two things you need to send to me ASAP. No. <laughs> but, hey, at least one of them's done, right? JK, but not JK. But <laughs> I, she um, wants I, Ronin so bad. Are you on a keychain or magnet? I want a magnet. I feel like that would be better because I'm almost worried that if I have it as a keychain, it's going to get, like, fucked up in my purse. So definitely a magnet. That way I can stare at it every single day when I go to my kitchen. But, Aww. yeah, I I just love Ronin so much. So let's get into the top ten. And before we do, we, of course, have a message from a friend of the podcast and – I have been listening to They Call This Movie forever now, and they just released this one this past week. Um, I forget the name of it, Death of a Cheerleader or something, but it is actually hilarious, like, their commentary and shit. But I was going to say, Dan always gives us a shout-out, so, of course, I want to give one of their uh, podcasts a shout-out because they have different – their I'm just going to read the the promo here because they explain it a lot better than I do. So the podcast that we are promoting right now is Stranger Damies. Stranger Damies is the ongoing real play D&D podcast from the main Damie family of podcasts. Make sure you join them every Wednesday as the Wild Stallions traverse the many traps and tribulations that Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition has to throw in their path. There's elves, weird half-dragon people, conspiracies to uncover, and more references to the 1980s than Ready Player One. Subscribe to the podcast on all podcast services by searching Stranger Damies, and make sure you follow them on Twitter and Instagram at Stranger Damies. Stranger Damies is, of course, a proud member of Geek Vibes Nation. You can find us at geekvibesnation.com. Brittany, I feel like I would be a fantastic DM in Dungeons and Dragons, because I do have a flair for the dramatics. <laughs> oh, I was say, the flair for the dramatics, and also just, uh, what's it called? A mean streak. Because DM, 
And Jacob loved to torture, loved to torture their, uh, what would you call it, their their campaign. Um, I remember when I was doing D&D, like, he would just, like, our DM would just laugh. because And we'd be like, oh, you know, what's wrong? And he's like, oh, I was just thinking about how much I'm going to make y'all's life a living hell this week. Oh. And I was like, please. <laughs> Jeez, I mean, okay, tell me how you really feel. I didn't know there was a level of sadomasochism that went into Dungeons & Dragons. You learn something new every day. But I mean... speaking, speaking of torture and destructiveness and all that, let's get on to the podcast. And it is going to be ladies first. And Brittany, you got the number 10. You said ladies first. Now... Uh, like, now I'm confused. Now I'm joking. No, uh, no. It, it's just an expression. It doesn't go any deeper than that. Uh-huh, I hear you. No, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I was looking at it. I know this is, I'm going to throw this one in, and you'll get it. You'll get it. I think, okay. I, man, I feel like that should be higher. Oh, no. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go with it. I'm going to go with Tony Stark. And my reason is for that is because he's destructive in a different way. Because you think about, like, all these countries that have been going to war using his technology for that, where they're like, oh, hey, that's, you know, that's for defense, that's for the military, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then you see these terrorist organizations are, like, using it, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have, uh, you know, when that mother confronts Tony, and it's because, you know, his stuff was used there, or he, that was in Sokovia, right? But he got the blame for that. And you think of all the times that, like, he has fought, and you can actually, think about the the fight with uh, Thanos. Didn't he throw a moon at him? Did he not throw a moon at Thanos if we're talking about, like, destructiveness? I don't know. Tony, to me, is like, you may think, oh, well, he's one of the leaders, right? Mm -hmm. You know, he's a little more calculated with it. But in the beginning, especially when you take his uh, kind of civilian, uh, I'm trying to think of the word for it, what he did as a civilian just making the stuff to be used and seeing, like, what the terrorists you were using it for, in a way, you know, he's responsible for that, so in a way, he's the one that are making these countries be, like, I don't know, war, war wastelands, so I'm gonna go with Tony. He's also super self-destructive as well, but... Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, there's that too. But, you know, I agree. I think that that actually totally encompasses the whole thing of this specific podcast, is that he is super destructive. Um, I, the other day, actually was just re-watching Iron Man 3, when he, you know, tells the Mandarin, the quote-unquote Mandarin, uh, yeah. where, you know, like, where he lives. And even though, say, he didn't cause that destruction of his home, like, personally, he kind of set that on course by even, like, so lax or, you know, he so it he goaded on... And also, actually, now that I think about it, in Iron Man 2, when he was going really... Cause Iron Man 1, yes, like, he was obviously self-destructive. Actually, no, he was destructive. He was, you know, an arms dealer. And uh, Iron Man 2, he was incredibly self-destructive because he felt like he was dying. And remember at one point he has, like, a party at his house, and he's wearing the Iron Man suit, and he's being, like, super, um, whatchamacallit, it? he's being, like, super crazy about it, like, reckless. And wrote irresponsible there you go and Rhodey had to like go get another suit and try and like get him to calm down he pretty much just like fought Rhodey in the middle of his house causing obviously a shit ton of destruction and as you said in Sokovia even though like to me I always look at that and I'm like I know that people die but even Natasha said it's I watched I went back and watched Age of Ultron right I know I should get a medal for that 
Ultron. He made Ultron. He, oh, yes. So not only did he make Ultron, but I was going to say at some point, even Natasha says to Steve that the lives here don't compare to, say, the lives down there as the numbers. So it's like, and I know that sounds messed up, but Ultron wanted to use that as a freaking meteor that was going to wipe out all of humanity. So it's like they, and you know, Ultron started lifting the freaking thing. They really didn't have a choice. But yes, ultra destructive. Um, the fight between Tony and Hulk in Age of Ultron when Tony was wearing the Hulkbuster suit. Like, Tony was definitely destructive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I 100% agree with this, that Tony, for someone who is quote-unquote, just a man in an iron suit. He caused a lot of destruction. What an asshole. (laughs) No, I'm really glad that you put him on because I actually didn't even think of this. And I'm like, you know what? There's no better way to start this list than having freaking Iron Man himself because he definitely wasn't the, um, the most responsible at some point in his life. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, so I I love that. I will definitely put that down as number 10. I will get number 9, and mine is, um, <laughs> I don't know, just, like, kind of laughing at my own freaking thingy here, because since you put a, like, uh, what you might call it, since you put, like, essentially, quote-unquote, just a man, I'm going to put quote-unquote, just a man for mine, and it's going to be the Punisher. (laughs) I didn't even think of him! That's a good one! Yeah. So, Frank Castle, you know, Mm -hmm. our our, our good old Frank Castle here, you know, he has caused a lot of destruction, and I don't think that he would ever be as apologetic about it as Tony Stark was. Oh, no. No. I mean, all right, let's just start with the fact that the first time you even freaking see him is um, shooting up a hospital. Like, super destructive. He pretty much, like, took New York on this incredible, crazy freaking scene. So it's like hospitals getting destroyed, going through freaking restaurants getting destroyed, just shooting up places, like, left and right, uh, a wake of bodies in his path, and freaking, like, even through, like, Daredevil Season 2, The Punisher Season 1, The Punisher Season 2, he is just, like, stacking up shit. In Punisher Season 2, there's, like, a car chase, an ambulance, like, drops down and shit. I mean, it is insane how much destruction this one man, like, causes. And a person who doesn't have the technology that Tony does, doesn't have any sort of superpower, but yet he is, like taking New York on some sort of wild ride everywhere he goes. All I think of is, no, they. It was him. (laughs) (laughs) I did just get to you every time because you're right. He is like, I just, okay. Just in like, you know what I feel is a great analogy Mm. for him is that scene in season one where he is sledgehammering that wall and I still remember I like uh Aaron he was like oh you know that's a really uh weird way to be trying to like I feel like there's a more uh like efficient way to do that right Mm -hmm. and it's just like but that's such a good thing for the Punisher is that he doesn't care how he's doing it's just him doing his own way destroying this wall this like thing that should have taken you know, possibly weeks to do, just sledgehammering it away, because that's kind of like his personality. He just chips away about, like, what he puts his mind to. I think that's a good analogy as well. Like, there's definitely, you know, Frank Castle isn't subtle. He's never there, you know, to, he's never going to not be subtle. He's going to make this big, gigantic boom, pretty much. And he did that all throughout daredevil season two all throughout 
punishes season one. I mean, I remember when, you know, pretty much the public finds out that Frank Castle is alive and he, you know, takes the police on some sort of wild chase. I mean, he literally, what, picks up a rock and, like, throws it at one of the cops, you know? Um, His fight against the, um, oh, what was... Lewis, the the young terrorist over there. Oh, um, yeah. You know, he, his, like, fight against that. And then in season two, you know, he literally, like, fights Russo um, in a crowded street at some point. He's running through a crowd, like, shooting at this guy. And they're, like, shooting back at each other. And, you know, then there's this one moment where he storms pretty much, like, the billy russo's hideout and the amount of like carnage that he unleashes on everyone is insane so to me it's like he may just be one man with a shit ton of guns and he does a lot with that i'm sorry i'm still thinking of like that scene where even i was like ooh with the irish man oh uh, yeah i can I always have to look away because when Finn is like your family who cares and Punisher just freaking blows a hole in the middle of his face and I'm like oh god oh my god graphic <laughs> it is like oh it's bad for it and I was thinking okay Finn is not so bad right yeah yeah you know, or shot here or there you know or you know breaking some bones but between that scene and the diner scene. The diner scene was rough, too. The diner scene was definitely rough. I mean, you were like, they, you heard everything. I was like, poor Karen. I have to say really quick, I was, I don't know why I just thought about that. So, um, remember in Daredevil Season 2 when Punisher and Daredevil first kind of team up against the Irish people? And <laughs> Matt is trying so hard to get frank not to kill and he and he's like no killing and frank's like altar boy and um it i was last week doing like a christopher nolan uh batman rewatch and i went and watched the dark knight rises and there's at some point where catwoman and batman are fighting against these goons together and catwoman goes to like shoot one of them and batman stops her and he's like no killing and she's like now where's the fun in that <laughs> and i was like oh look <laughs> if, they, if they were in the same universe they could bang okay <laughs> Oh, man, I love it. I love it. So, yeah, my number nine is going to be the Punisher, Frank Castle. He's one destructive dude. So, uh, yeah, Brittany, what is your number eight? I'm looking here. I'm still going through that order while I'm like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the lesser one. A lesser one probably than even Tony. And I'm going to go ahead and go with A-Train. You are A-Train, don't you? Wait, from the boys? Yes. I'm I gonna- love you. <laughs> I yeah, am I'm thinking like, about I, the boys' I characters. From the boys on there. But uh, I, said, I have somebody else from the boys going to be on this list. But uh, I, I was sitting there as like superhero, super. Technically, they're soups, Tia. That doesn't they make them soups. good. They, but they, but are, they are soups. soups. But uh, I'm going to go with A-Train because he literally ran through a lady. Like, the whole jump start to the series is he exploded her. He did not just, like, oh, you know, ran her over like a car, right? Mm-hmm. Like, where, you, where they're mostly intact. No, he exploded her. Like, where only, what it, what it was left on him, like, her arms or something yeah. on the, the main dude? Yeah. Like, it was just an explosion. And even his race with that other guy, like, to see who was the fastest, right? Mm-hmm. You just, you can't even see them. It's just like a light at that point. And you wonder, like, okay, what else could he do? If he could run through a human like this with no... <sighs> I'm trying to think, was minimal effort, and when he's like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, and he has, like, a freaking tooth, what did he say, like, a tooth in his mouth or something? He says some shit. 
But you have to think about, like, especially with the lack of care that most of them give for the general population, it, you, it, it's basically a villain superhero. A villain superhero, Tia. What do we make of that? Like, there's plenty of villains out there that we go, okay, they're pretty destructive. Well, take Thanos, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but you take, which, like, I know he sees himself as a hero, and that's a different point. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to go with A-Train, because he's the worst. And you think about, they ran through that human like that. How many more humans could he uh, possibly kill when he was actually giving effort? I love you. I didn't even think about the boys. I was just thinking, like, Marvel and DC, and now I'm kicking myself, because I'm like, shit, you're right. Um, as you said, The Boys, which is a utterly fantastic um, freaking series on Amazon Prime. I cannot wait for the second season to come out. They actually finished filming it before the end of the world fucking happened, so that's good. Um, yeah, everything gets kicked off because freaking, you know, they live in a world where they're superheroes, right? And I'm going to say really quick, remember, there was just soups. And it was at the end of the series that they kind of came out with their first super villain, even though technically they're all the worst, but they're all technically quote unquote superheroes. So it starts with poor Huey, you know, having a loving moment with it. I forget if it was she was just like a girlfriend or fiance or yeah, I think um. Because weren't they about to move out together that they had finally, like, were getting ready? She had just yeah. convinced him to move out? Yeah, yeah. Um, he, because he lives with his dad, yes. Um, so, you know, he's sitting there, like, you know, having this really loving moment with her. And suddenly it's, like, you never think of that, right? You have characters like The Flash or Quicksilver, and you're like, yeah, they're really... Fast. And I think, like, maybe they've explored sometimes that, or I don't even know if they've explored that, like, even them carrying someone is, like, too much for them, right? You know, like, that would be too much for a person. But so they never really... Ex- like, on their body, like, too much force. I want to say that they did something like that in the anime Cyborg 009, and I'm confusing it with the freaking... No, Cyborg. The- Zero zero nine because it was the girl and the old man and yes. the baby uh, has to explain like you can't just do that their bodies right. can't it. ooh that's a good one but I don't think they've ever really explained that in like live action Flash or Quicksilver right so it's like you never think of that with these speedsters and it's like not only is that with A Train, right? He he it, it's not even him like picking up someone and running that fast. <laughs> he literally runs through someone. How fast do you need to be going to run through someone where they literally burst into just this giant thing of like blood and meat and everything? And it was like so grotesque that I was like Oh my god. <laughs> but it not I was jarring. Like was it not absolutely jarring cuz you remember that that's not in the trailers. There's no oh. there was no really like an explanation that something was going to happen to her. I remember I was watching I was like, "Oh, this is, you know, this is sweet, you know, blah blah blah." And then like it happens so quickly and then there's just blood and you go, "What the fuck happened?" And then you go, "Oh, Oh, oh, if you, like, see the arms he's still holding on to, you're like, you're like, it was, did it not even feel real for a second? No, because, you know, the way they shot it, right, I think was all focused on, like, Huey's face. So as he was just kind of, like, looking into her eyes, loving it, it's like she was there one second and then she wasn't. And it's like, it wasn't even like, you know, A-Train just bumped into her and she, like, got tossed aside and maybe hit her head or something, you know, or, you know, the impact, you know, killed her, but she was still intact, you know? It's, no, 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 no. She literally exploded. And... If that's not bury at that point, what did you say? I said there's nothing really to even bury at that point but arms. <laughs> it's so bad, and it's like if that isn't destructive, I don't know what is. 
Well, it's like, um, oh, there was a point I was going to make about that, about, oh, I think I lost it. Either way, I was going to say just basically that in how they, they uh, this is what I wrote, I was going to say, they went with the Quentin Tarantino, uh, yes. uh, uh, a flair, right? They, they went for blood and gore. But it was so good. I love the boys. Now, admittedly, I will admit that, uh, freaking admittedly, I will admit, um, but A-Train wasn't my favorite character on that show, uh, but he was definitely, like, an asshole. <laughs> you know, he was a girlfriend. Like, what did he do to her again? To, to the girl? He just kept, he kept running. He he would like you know stop for a second and he was like oh my god I'm so sorry and then just like oh, ran his off girl, his girlfriend oh, like the one he ran oh, off he he, over, he did he, he overdosed her oh, he okay. killed her she also was hella destructive though because she literally squished a guy's face <laughs> with her thighs I, if that's not dummy thick I don't know what is. <laughs> I don't know if it was her thighs or her, like, I don't want to get crap here, but her, her hips, her hip uh, going up and down on that. Her just don't lie. <laughs> Yeah, but no, he killed her. He, like, overdosed her. He, like, told her that he loved her, and then he, like, ran really quick, so and then just, like, injected her with a shit ton of drugs. And I was like, you asshole. Well, he's the worst. Exactly, but I love it. A train is such a good um, choice for this freaking list. I'm I'm so happy right now. Um, I'm gonna get number seven, and while you know he is certainly probably one of the most destructive characters in you know DC, Marvel, whatever, I th- want to put others higher than him. So I'm actually gonna go with the Hulk. Which is actually the, like, freaking character that inspired this list in the first place for me. I was like, he is, because I was talking about it, and I was saying that, you know, before, say, Thor Ragnarok, right? It's like, yeah, he's a part of the Avengers, he's part of the quote-unquote heroes, but he is so uncontrollable and so unpredictable. It's like you pretty much have, like, a caged animal on your team that requires you to literally uh, ring him in every time. I mean, okay, in Age of Ultron, right, they had to come up with a lullaby to even get him to freaking calm down. It's like, how do you control that, you know? Um... And we saw in, you know, the first Avengers, he pretty much (laughs) almost, like, he destroys so much of the helicarrier that he's in when he, like, goes into his rage mode at first. Like, I went back and rewatched. He's, like, going after Natasha, and he's literally, like, destroying everything. Thor can hardly um, get a hold of him and, you know, all that. And obviously, he was on the Avengers' side. And so the, he was on the Avengers side in the first one, you know, in the Battle of New York. So he's a little bit more controlled, but still hella destructive. I mean, jumping and flying through the freaking buildings and shit, which at that point, you know, I mean, the Chitauri and Loki were trying to destroy freaking New York as well. So you got to do what you got to do. But in Age of Ultron, when Wanda gets into Banner's head... He pretty like, and that's what I was saying before, Tony had to, like, build a freaking Hulkbuster suit, which didn't even at first really, you know, do anything. And they destroyed buildings, like, buildings (laughs) um, in this poor, like, you know, town or whatever. And the Hulk is just unstoppable. He's tearing up the ground. He's tearing up, you know, everything. And so between that and freaking Thor Ragnarok, which, you know, he's going toe-to-toe with Thor and shit like that. He's going toe-to-toe with the big-ass dog. I mean, at some point in it, he freaking tries to go against Surtur. And it's like, this is one destructive character that... I know a lot of people love Hulk for that. And 
are disappointed with the direction that they went with, you know, with, um, you know, Dr. Hulk pretty much. But to me, I'm like, how do you have a character like that that's so uncontrollable that every time he transforms, you have to, it's like a gamble of, is he going to be able to calm down or not? I know. It's kind of like, you know it's bad when he puts the fear into Loki. Like, a literal <laughs> god. And even he's afraid. And you think about, like, he beat the shit out of Thor. Like, mm-hmm. Thor, yeah. You know, he later on used his lightning. But it, ultimately, I mean, it was intense. Like, he, the Hulk in his own right, when you think about what he did when he was just, like, left alone to his own devices. I, I, is it Dr. Hulk or, or Professor Hulk? I Professor can't remember what. Professor Hulk. You're okay. right. You're right. It's Professor Hulk. I couldn't remember. But you know when he sees his past self and he can't even look at it, he was <laughs> like, basically, like, that wasn't a good time in my life. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he tried to go after Spider. Is that the thing, like, where he, uh, he, like, punched him, didn't he? Like, it, it, he ended up getting thrown back, like, just, like, volleyball back. But he has, like, no fear. He went against uh, the big wolf. He, uh, I don't he think, against like, Thanos. Oh, yeah, he went against Thanos, except Thanos kicked his butt. And but, they, for a solid, but for a solid second, he was holding his own. So that's insane. If you have to think about, like, the power of, say, the Hulk, I'll never forget. And I feel like um, I don't know, like, where things were at in the beginning of the MCU. I think it wasn't owned by Disney at this point. I'm not sure. I can't remember. But it's very adult is what I'm going to say, a very mature theme. But in the first Avengers where Bruce said, I got low and I put a bullet in my mouth, and the Hulk spit it back out. And I'm like, that is insane to have, like, that level. What? That was Black Widow when she's bringing the Hulk in, like, to, like, I think it was in the first Avengers. Yeah, it was in the first Avengers, and it's all of them in, um, they're all kind of, like, arguing, and something like, you know, they say something about, like, Oh, oh, this something like, uh, what? Oh, you think you can, like, you know, kill me? Or you think you can kill the Hulk? Like, well, I've tried. He was like, I've tried. And he was like, I got real low. He was like, I didn't see a way out, so I ate a bullet. You know, which, you know, what he's fucking saying. And yeah. he's saying that the Hulk spit it right out. So it's like, that's insane. That's a level that is, like, incomprehensible. It's just crazy thinking that it, it's like, one, is his body recovering that quickly? Is it just the Hulk comes out so violently? I also want a pair of his pants, whatever can, like, survive that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Which I did like that in uh, Thor Ragnarok, we got to see a softer side of the actual Hulk like get to know more about that side and realize that I think that was a good place for Bruce Banner to even see that the Hulk isn't truly a monster in his own right. It's just that constant struggle to keep it down is what causes that fear, like the fear of the unknown. Because when we see the Hulk, actually, he wasn't too bad. Like even with Valkyrie, like he was kind of like a cool character. You're definitely right in Thor Ragnarok. It's like he definitely was, you know, angry and destructive. But first of all, he's there having, like, a conversation with Thor saying, you know, oh, I always just get so angry. You guys don't like me. You only like Banner. Um, And then he calls Valkyrie angry girl. And he's, like, having a good time and stuff like that. So he definitely has this moment in Thor Ragnarok where we see a little bit more of, like, as you said, the actual Hulk. And I think, as you said, in that movie, right, it's like when Bruce comes back, he's afraid of turning back into the Hulk. But then he accepts it when they're going up against Hela's army in Asgard. And I think that that was all 
uh, transformation for Bruce Banner to get him where he did in Endgame, where he said, why was I treating the Hulk like a disease all this time when it, we could have just worked together? But as you said, I did love an Endgame when they go back in time and he sees 2012 Hulk and he's like, oh, God, embarrassing. And Cap is like, maybe you want to smash a th- few things while you're here. <laughs> He's like, roar. He's going like, <laughs> or something. And he like, looks back at uh, Tony and Cap. And he just kind of shrugs. <laughs> it's the personality of Bruce Banner, which is always pretty mild in Hulk's body. <laughs> I know. Like, what's he call him? Weak Bruce, or weak Banner is <laughs> what he called him. <laughs> puny banner (laughs) oh my gosh i love it i love when he like knocks loki around in the first avengers and he's like puny god (laughs) because loki was like i'm a god (laughs) which technically if is a can a frost giant be counted as a god I guess that is true, because he's not technically Asgardian, but, I mean, either way, they do live, like, an insane amount of time. Well, I think so. Like, I don't know actual Norse mythology, but possibly, Um, because, you know, these characters are based on Norse characters, even though they altered them for the sake of comic books, but you know what I'm saying. I love, but really, really quick, I went back and I watched um, Infinity War, and it's the beginning where, you know, Loki is, you know, telling, um, I just felt like that scene was so good, really quick in the beginning, because Loki was saying, you know, not only did he say, oh, well, we have a Hulk, which was a call back and he's saying you know at first he's like oh i'm not as guardian but he calls himself odin's son but my main thing is that i was re-watching that and i said to paulie i was like he just saw the hulk get his ass beat what made him think that he was going to be able to sneak attack thanos in that moment <laughs> He tried to pull a snake moment like he did with Thor, where he's like, I was like, oh, this neat snake, and then it was was Loki. It was Loki thinking that, oh, I'll act all nice to to Thanos and act like I'm giving him my undying loyalty, but then when he's not prepared, I'm going to strike, and it's like, bruh, bruh. Thinking back to Loki real quick, um, I think about what you say all the time where he looks so rough in, a, like, uh, Avengers. Mm-hmm. Like, he looks, yeah. like, sick. But he looks like he's seen some shit. Well, there's at some point in the first Avengers movie when he thinks back to um, when he was speaking to the Jatari and they were first giving him the scepter. And he kind of, like, winced at the memory and shit like i feel like they're in his head or something like that he de- like from the first thor to the first avengers loki definitely looked like he saw some shit <laughs> and he's been through some loki, shit he <laughs> he's traumatized is you got to i i just do that i just do is Loki technically considered a hero now since he did kind of save Asgard? I thought about that. I was like, should we count Loki? <laughs> because in a way, he's like a very destructive hero. And he's not a hero. You know what? We can, we can put this on the table, Kia. We can put this on the table. But, um... I I put Hulk as my number seven, and what is your number six? I'm going to go with Xavier from uh, Logan. Okay. And, and uh, my fact for that is he killed the entire X-Men. He, uh, <laughs> the way you just killed. have to emphasize that. <laughs> no, I'm serious. So you think about, like, how ungodly strong he is like 
I can't remember, like, there's a classification for mutants, and I'm trying to remember if he's considered Omega level. I think he's considered an Omega level, because uh, I'm trying to think of, because I was reading today, by the way, that in the Fantastic Four, uh, oh, uh, Mr. Fantastic, and uh, I can't remember her name. Is it Sue? I can't Sue's remember. Born. Yeah. Their son is considered beyond Omega level, which is, like, past, like, God level of a mutant. So I think Xavier is considered an Omega level, I'm pretty sure, which is, like, top-tier mutant. And you think about, you get a, like, like one of the strongest mutants and give him, you know, a degenerative brain disease. And he can't even remember killing the entire X-Men. And you think about how easy, basically, it was to do that for him without even really realizing that if he had ever used his power to its full capabilities in a destructive manner, he probably could have. Like, you think about how he used, uh, oh, what was the name of the the machine he used to basically be with in touch with every mind in the world and think about if he had decided to do something worse he could have destroyed the world he could have killed every human on earth and you know even Magneto wore that helmet for that reason to keep Xavier out and I just think back to even with uh, Logan you know, when he hasn't taken his medicine and they're in that hotel in that casino. And, you know, it was like how hard it was for Logan to even get there. And, like, he was about to kill everybody in that casino because it was, like, so destructive on their mind. You have to wonder what it was actually like. And you take someone like that who's not even realizing what they're doing, their power's just going out of control, and, you know, he is very much a hero. He put together the X-Men. You know, everything he's ever done has been for them. And that's why I kind of like in the newer movies, uh, like, uh, how getting to see him younger and a little more selfish and become the man he was then was kind of nice but yeah i'm gonna go with xavier because he mad strong in the words of tia because she likes to use the word mad don't call me out for my (laughs) yonkers dialect (laughs) i remember really quick that i was in high school and we were in computer class and this one classmate You know, and our teacher is one of those, like, really, like, square type of teacher who tried to be cool with the kids and get down with the lingo, but not at all. (laughs) And we had this one classmate one time who was getting frustrated with the computer, and he was like, yo, this is mad stupid. And, um freaking the teacher was like mad how can the computer be mad and it's like oh god and he like we were all just sitting there like please stop please stop please stop please stop (laughs) stop trying to make mad happen it's never gonna happen to you oh my god but um yeah i remember watching logan for the first time and i was sitting there and when you find out that the reason why the other X-Men don't exist anymore is because Xavier, you're like, first of all, how freaking powerful he is to even have accomplished that. And also how sad, because he loved the X-Men. That was his life's work. You know, they all look to him as uh, a teacher, as a, you know, as guidance. And for him to be the one to have to, killed them all was so powerful and heavy and you think about as you said it's like how insane is that that the one person with the most powerful mind on the planet who can do so many things with it is developing alzheimer's and losing control of his mind i mean that is just so and as you said so destructive what he's able to do 
and how that scene you really like kind of felt the gravity of the situation that if they hadn't gotten to Xavier in time that so many other people would have been killed and not only like say I destructive I want to say you can almost say that too for what he did to Jean Grey by um pretty much getting into her mind and saying that he put like things in her mind to kind of you know block off certain shit and it's like how is someone able to do that <laughs> like how you think of him planting memories like the full capabilities of what he has to do and i have to wonder too you know would they, they talk about the x-men but if he was in the, the mansion, did he kill all the children mutants that were in the house? I mean, he might have. I think that was what was so um, intense and why I think Logan hid Xavier away. Because I think he was pretty much like a wanted man at that point. And, you, and I think that's why Logan like kept him away from everyone. And, you know, and you have to think about how good of Logan to do that, too, because he didn't hold it against him. Like, he knew it wasn't his fault. Did you think, oh, how cruel it is for him to be keeping him in that place, right? But one, it was for his safety. Two, he's saving all this money just to be able to buy a boat for them to be on the water together so he can take care of him. Like, to me, it's just like, Logan was the ultimate good with that to try to take care of Xavier. Logan loved Xavier, and I think that that was so... Because if you think about all the movies that came beforehand, right, it's... You, you're you watching them, and it's, you know, sometimes Logan is a little abrasive towards Charles. You know, he doesn't really want to get with the program that Charles is doing. And then in X-Men 3, The Last Stand, he gets quite pissed at Charles for doing what he did to Jean Grey. So, you know, their relationship hasn't always seemed like, you know, the best, but I think that there was a, a mutual respect there. Um, and I think that Logan saw ultimately that this wasn't, you know, he, Charles was, didn't do any of that intentionally. It was because his mind was deteriorating. And I love that he wanted to get that boat for the two of them because it's like they live in a world where their kind now isn't welcomed, where they fought for so long to be welcomed and to be accepted by people. Um, and that was, oh god, so sad that it was a Logan that killed Charles. Oh, and that he saw his face when he did it. Yeah, so it's like, that. I only hope that he didn't have the consciousness to really grasp that, because it seemed like he was then talking to Logan and kind of like, oh, are we on the boat? And he's like, yeah, Charles, we're on the boat. So it's like, it seemed like he at least thought that. So at least he had like a happy memory before he died. I'm depressed. I'm so depressed. It's your fault for putting Xavier on this list. Well, you the one that went deeper with it. So Because any time so. I think, Anytime I think about the movie Logan, it's like I get so depressed. It was such a beautiful movie, but, like, they were just thinking to themselves, we're just going to depress the hell out of everyone. The, sun, the sun's getting real low, too. <laughs> They're like, you see all these characters that you love? You see all these characters that you spent years loving? We're going to kill them. And it's going to be gone. sad. They gone. <laughs> Oh, yeah. um, great, great pick for number six. I am going to pick number five, and I am putting down Scarlet Witch as the That's most. Good. Because freaking Wanda Maximoff is one of the most powerful, if not the, like, I know Captain Marvel is powerful as shit, but Wanda's powerful, all right? If... Thanos hadn't had his little ship rain fire, she could have killed him. She was on the way to kill him when that happened. But, you know, so you first meet Wanda in Age of Ultron, and she clearly doesn't like the Avengers at this point, and she gets in all of their heads. So 
not only does she get into the Hulk's head to make him go on his, like, destructive rampage, but she gets into all their heads where she pretty much debilitates them, it be, like, collapsing into their own minds, you know? That's insane. Like, that's so powerful, and that was incredibly destructive because it just completely, like, pulled apart the Avengers in that moment. And then in Civil War, which I still don't think is Wanda's fault, but regardless, this is where we're where we at right now. Um, you know, when she was trying to contain the bomb that Crossbones was going to set off and flung him, as I like to say, yeeted him up into the air. <laughs> He heated him up into the air and, you know, destroyed, like, that floor of a building that caused everyone to be like, let's point fingers at Wanda and say how, you know, awful she is and blah, blah, blah. So that was freaking destructive. Um, Oh, God, what else did she do in Civil War? I'm trying to think right now. I mean, when she freaking, like, went up against Vision, Vision, who's, like, an insanely powerful being, and she was able to collapse him to his knees and freaking, like, have him pretty much, like, going through every single floor of the Avengers Tower, that's destructive, and that's incredibly powerful. Oh, definitely. When did they fight again? Was she still a villain at that point? No, so in Age of Ultron, you know, she is a little bit of a villain there, but when her and Pietro find out that Ultron is planning on wiping out humanity is when they start, you know, uh, helping the Avengers. And the only real interaction that she and Vision have in that one is uh, Vision goes to get her because, you know, she's so distraught over the death of Pietro, she doesn't even, like, move when the freaking you know, land starts deteriorating. So in Civil War, when the Sokovia Accords are happening and she's, like, pretty much trapped in the Avengers Tower, Clint goes to get her out and Vision is like, I can't allow that. And he's like, you can't stop me. And Clint's like, I can't, but Wanda can. Oh, I remember that now. Okay, 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 yes. But you know what, really quick, you know, I love that scene because... You know, that whole, like, before that is Wanda, you know, trying to live with grasping the fact that people are so afraid of her. And so as she has vision and he's pretty much, like, falling to his knees because she's so powerful, he's like, if you do this, they will never stop being afraid of you. And she goes, I can't control their fear, only my own. And I'm like, that's her just realizing, like, it's not my, it's not my fucking problem that other people are uncomfortable with me <laughs> you know that Halsey song it, there it goes you're you, uh, it's like you should gosh darn right you should be scared of me and it's like that makes me think of her for full disclosure of anyone who's listening no she doesn't say gosh darn right but Brittany is a good Christian girl who can't say I god damn it <laughs> <laughs> Believe me or not, I'll say, um, I almost said it, I'll say the C word. I was going to say, say Brittany will say the C word, she'll say motherfuckers, she'll say everything. I have heard she can curse like a sailor, and some of the things that she would say would make your father embarrassed, but the goddamn, she can't say. <laughs> um, speaking of that, that like with that's that, and stuff, they, that's your Baptist uh, upbringing there. <laughs> true facts, true facts. Uh, but, like, people on Twitch have started to catch on to that, and they're like, that's adorable. They're like, oh, you'll say this and this, but this is the one that gets you, and I'm like, yeah, yeah. Oh, Brittany. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so Wanda is, oh, and... Of course, in Infinity War, let's just talk about the fact that she was able to destroy an Infinity Stone. Oh, yeah. Like, that's incredible. Like, you think about holding her own with an Infinity Stone and then having the destructive force, which is still so sad. And it's like, I only feel you. And I'm like, oh. (laughs) He's like, you could never hurt me. I only feel you. Oh, stop it. Stop it. Which gets me inside 
Now remember that that's what she said to him when he said, you yeah, know, what do you feel? And she's like, oh, I only feel you. And I was like, ugh. I know. I'm like, why you got to walk like that, man? And Why you got to be so rude? <laughs> and I do know, I don't know if they're going to um, touch upon this, say, in the live action capacity. But, you know, obviously we're going to get WandaVision, and it seems like Wanda is kind of creating this own little world for herself, maybe to kind of deal with the trauma that she's freaking had to deal with. But I do know, and those who are listening, uh, if you want to correct me or add, you know, obviously feel free to do so online, but um, there is a comic book run called The House of M., And, of course, I'm bastardizing the description here, but it's essentially Wanda kind of, like, losing her grip on reality and becoming incredibly destructive to the point where the Avengers have to stop her. Oh, shit. Yeah. So Wanda is not only one of the most destructive heroes, but also one of the most powerful. So, yeah, I'm putting Wanda down. And I swear to God... If they don't at least mention her frickin' brother in WandaVision, I'm gonna lose my mind. We haven't she, that's heard about him twin. ever. That's her twin. We already know in real life how strong of a bond twins have with each other. And they were incredibly close to the point where <clears throat> she could feel his death. Um, and they didn't even want to like leave each other's side. And you're telling me that you never bring him back. You never even have her mention, like, Pietro. She's never like, oh, you know, I just really miss Pietro. It was us, you know, for all our lives. We took care of each other. Our parents died when we were 10, so literally had to take care of each other. You don't even, like, have them her mention him at all. And it's like, what? So it's like, if, you, if you're telling me that in WandaVision, right, she is creating her perfect world where Vision is around, that she isn't also going to want her brother around? Bitch, please. <laughs> you know what gets me about it is you'll have her, like, go off and be, like, on this have-to-murder spree, like, with Thanos, which is understandable. But, like, all of this for Vision, but, like, you, and she's still on about it with Vision and losing her mind, but then you don't get that same treatment for her own twin. You're, like, and she's not known Vision that long. I, well, I guess she knew him for, uh, not for five years. Well, she's probably only known him for, like, a year or two. I don't understand it. Like, that's your brother. The, I, I, what was the problem? Did the MCU not like Quicksilver? Was there, you know, conflict between the fact that Disney had a Quicksilver and Fox had a Quicksilver? Like, does the actor not want to come back? Because at this point, it's been long enough. If you can't get the actor back, get a different actor. It's not like it'll be the first time in frickin' the MCU where we've had a different actor play the same character. Uh, uh, Deadpool. What'd you say? Are you you said something about the same actor playing something? Oh, I was thinking it was uh, Deadpool. No, I'm saying it's not the first time that you've had two different actors play a character. You've had, you know, Edward Norton played Bruce Banner at first, and then Mark Ruffalo took over for him in the first Avengers. Brody. You- you had Terrence Howard play War Machine in the first Iron Man. Then we've had Don Cheadle this whole time. So it's like if Aaron Taylor uh, Johnson can't, you know, make it or doesn't wish to come back, then get someone else. <laughs> Fix it. <laughs> Fix it. Which, by the way, um, I was looking back really quick. I know this has nothing to do with anything. But I was sitting here and I was so happy that Don Cheadle was the guy to be War Machine, because, like, no offense to Terrence Howard, I just couldn't see him being long-term in this world, and I just didn't find him as enjoyable. Like, Don Cheadle is such a treat, and so such a good actor that I'm like, I love him. 
uh, I, I didn't realize in the third Iron Man how much of a role he had in it. And I was like, I love him. And his, like, bond with Nebula in Endgame was just top tier for me. I know. They were sweet together. I'm still thinking, though, of the uh, mean tweets, like the Jimmy Kimmel uh, yeah. like mean tweets, and it was for the no. Avengers. And he's like, it's a Don Cheadle looking like a beetle. And Don Cheadle <laughs> looked right on the screen. And he's like, I don't know if I think he said so, like, fuck you, I think. But, like, what is funny? He's like, hey. it was so funny. I was like, poor Don Cheadle. That's that, that, that's like such a lame like insult. Like you just really wanted to do that just to rhyme with his last name. I don't know. <laughs> the other one I thought was hilarious is who uh, who plays uh, Black Panther again? Oh, uh, Chadwick Bosman. Chad Chadwick Bosman. They're like uh, one of the tweets was like, "How are you gonna have a cool ass hero like Black Panther and you gonna <laughs> name him some and name him Chadwick?" <laughs> I saw that. I did see that one because I was dying laughing about that. I, know, I was like, poor Chadwick, poor Chadwick. I think Chadwick's last name. Right? I was like, what's wrong with Chadwick? You never hear that, Chadwick. Chadwick. <laughs> and, his, and his last name is kind of like Bossman, even though it's Bosman or Bosman. It's like boss man you can just call him boss man right 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 <laughs> uh come down uh frank castle uh uh john <laughs> frank castle. oh my god i guess black i guess black panther could be pretty destructive too if he wanted to like he powerful as fuck i was went back and i watched black panther the other day and i was just like their tech could really destroy the world if they wanted to. What I thought about is, you know, his suit has such, like, a, like an open window for, like, what it could do. Because I was thinking about, you know, he can save up that energy, right, and expel it, like, if he takes damage. Why wouldn't you just have Captain America start wailing on you before <laughs> suit is, like, charged? And then do it. You know what I mean? Like, come hey, off the dead. That's great. Him just standing there, and he's like, all right, dude. And then Cap just, like, punching his stomach a bunch of times. And he's like, we good? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, I'm suited like up. Balboa movie. <laughs> what did you say? You're like a Rocky Balboa movie. Like, yeah. starting a montage of him taking all these hits. <laughs> no, it is true, because I did, I actually completely forgot about that aspect of his suit and then when they went through it in Black Panther I was like that makes sense because there's a scene in Infinity War when uh, Black Panther like jumps up and he goes up against one of those like ugly ass creatures right and you see like them all get kind of like shot to the side you know with the big purple wave and everything and I'm like I forgot that that was like an aspect of his suit no I thought that was so cool cool like I, I was thinking how cool a power like that would be to just be able to save up that kind of force and then expel it like that i think it's they cool should, they should just before we move on they should just have cap right punch the shit out of him a few times and they just set him on thanos because he'd be so so like supercharged and it'd just be like one punch right <laughs> like, you said one punch made me think of one punch man the anime I think- I knew you were going to. I knew you were going to. As soon as it came out of my mouth, I was like, she's going to make the correlation here. Just let me be a nerd, Tia. (laughs) The ultimate nerd. But, um, so I did Scarlet Witch for number five. Brittany, what is your number four? I'm going to go with, and it's because of the animated adaptations of it. But, 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 I can't remember the name of the movie. Um, but, I'm going to go with Batman. All right, all right. And and my reasoning for that is, I can't even think of the movie offhand, but you even know from Justice League, he has saved up a, like, a contingency plan for every hero of how to bring them down, how to kill them if necessary. 
And, like, that kind of thought process to even be able to do that is ultimately destructive in its own right. And also, yeah, he doesn't kill people. He just seriously maims them. Like like that one guy uh, in the Batman movie when he's like, oh, you know, I thought you don't kill, you know, blah, blah. And he's like, oh, this fall won't kill you. And he drops some of his ankle mm-hmm. spray. Oh, it's like, okay, you didn't kill that man, but he's probably going to be messed up for the rest of his life. Um, can we talk about that? But in... Um, in the movie, uh, I'm trying to think what the animated film is called, but he had made a plan how to kill every hero, like, or, uh, like, bring them down if necessary, which sounds super messed up. And villains, I think, uh, Mirror Master, is that his name? Yes. He gets a hold of that plan, right? He, uh, he gets into the Bat Cave. And ends up getting this plan. And in the movie, the villains are bringing down every hero. And it's so bad. Like, there's one for, like, the Flash. It attaches this bomb to his wrist. And if he stops running, it blows up. And so he basically either is going to slow down or run himself to death. Uh, Superman gets shot with a kryptonite bullet. And because it's a kryptonite bullet... It can't get, you can't cut him open to get to it, right? And so it's just slowly killing him. Uh, I'm trying to remember what Wonder Woman, I think, has like a hallucination that basically like it's making her heart rate go up so bad that she's going to have a heart attack. And uh, Martian, he ends up drinking something. It's like a poison. And you know how fire hurts him? It, they light him on fire because that liquid is coming out of his pores and it, not even water can put out the fire. And it's like, you have to think Batman made that plan for everyone to bring them down. If that's not destructive, I don't know what it is because in his own right, it's not always like the mass amount of damage they can do, but the fact that their brain is so smart that they could do so much more if they really wanted to. And that's terrifying. I mean, that's, to me, what has always been, like, you know, you hear people who are like, oh, like, Batman, he doesn't have any powers, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, he doesn't need powers. He's so intelligent and, as you said, always has these constingency plans right, that put him pretty much above everyone else. He just kind of, like, sits back and he observes. He knows who everyone is. He knows what they're... He he pretty much, like, looks to find out, right, their weak spots. How can he get, you know, to the point where he can defeat someone who is pretty much like a god or something, you know? Um I do love in The Dark Knight when he has that freaking gangster and he's like, oh, you know, a fool like this won't kill me. And he's like, I'm counting on it. <laughs> he just like tosses <laughs> him. Not a freaking ankles. Uh, uh, no. Uh, um, no, but yeah, I think that you can definitely count Batman as part of one of the most destructive uh, superheroes because... It, as you just said, like, he could take down everyone, and that's within his realm of doing. That is why someone as simple as a quote-unquote, like, just a man in a suit can do that. And, you know, you think about it, right, because, like, say, um, Tony Stark is just a quote-unquote man in a suit, but his suit, you know, has blasters, and freaking he can fly with it, and blah, blah, blah. Batman can't do any of that with his. I mean, I know that there are suits, so no comic book nerds yell at me right now. I, I get I get it, guys. Um, but his regular attire, you know, he just has, like, a belt with some gadgets, right? But that's all he freaking needs is a yeah. few belts, you know, a few gadgets to be able to do what he needs to do. But you know what gets to, too, is even if you want to go from the other standpoint, so- I still hated Batman versus Superman. Uh, was it Superman versus Batman or Batman versus Superman? It was Batman versus Superman. 
，你想试试，我儿子。<laughs> oh my god, I'm dying. I'm sorry. Uh, but you know he wore that suit that, and that was pretty destructive. He was holding his own against Superman in that point. Oh god, I'm still thinking of Martha. <laughs> Martha. <laughs> like, why does he scream his own mother's name and not like like I know he's trying to say like. Help my mom. Uh, maybe it's because it, they. Okay, he probably had his secret identity to keep. But then even like Lois runs up and she's like, "Martha's his mother." Oh my god, no. I'm so that no. is so ridiculous. I am cringing right now. <laughs> no, the whole thing was that um, Batman was like gonna kill him, right? But as this was happening. Yeah. Um, like Lex Luthor had like you know uh, Superman's mother, and so Superman was like, "Save Martha," and that's why he's like, "Martha, why did you say that name?" <laughs> you know, I'm just saying it's so ridiculous. Like even like Superman being like, "Save Martha," I'm like, "You mean your mom?" I mean, <laughs> like, like the only point, like, uh, like okay, if I was saying, "Hey, save my mom," I'd be like. Oh, you know, save Pam. I, mean, I wouldn't be like, save Pam. Save Pam. And they'd be like, who the fuck is Pam? <laughs> who is that? And then, like, Lois Lane materializes out of nowhere just to be like, it's his mother! I have no idea where Lois came from in that moment. Like, how she tracked down these two dudes, like, fighting against each other. But she, like, materialized out of nowhere. Doctor Strange, like, opened a portal somewhere for her so her, she could, like, step out just to specifically say that. Well, you know, Marvel and DC are the same thing anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> I do think it would be cool one day to have a DC versus Marvel, like, fun movie. Like, just for funsies. Like, let's not be too serious about it. Like, who cares? Like, let's just do it. You know? I I, I think that would be cool. There's been, like, a comic book run or two of it. I think the, the, the trouble is, like, okay, there's a game called Marvel versus Capcom. Yes, I know Marvel versus Capcom. I'm not that out of touch with the cool kids. No, no, but I'm saying I always wish they would do Marvel versus DC. But I think the problem is, is you'd have such a ravenous fan base. They'd be like, oh, well, this character's overpowered, you know, and you're putting them on Marvel. So, you know, it's like. I guess it would be too competitive, but I think it'd be so cool. Think of the money both places would make. I think people would freak the fuck out. Like, you know, I think that that would be, like, something to end all be all, you know? It would be so intense. Would it be in a campsite because it's so intense? That that was one of your worst ones. I have to tell you, that was one of your worst ones. What'd you say? So we're gonna move on with the list now. Um, <laughs> I can't with you. You need to go away somewhere. <laughs> um, what? How many? We still have like what? three to do i'm out of here bye you got this buddy (laughs) oh man but good job uh picking batman i will get the number three and so forgive me if i don't do the best describing this because it's been a long time since i've seen the movie but i have to consider her one of the most destructive superheroes and i know technically at this point she's then a villain but i'm gonna count it right And I think Phoenix is one of the most powerful and most destructive superheroes because obviously it's Jean Grey who then just kind of like transforms into Phoenix. And full disclosure, I did not see the recent Dark Phoenix movie just because I haven't kept up with the new Fox X-Men because they pretty much got so terrible after a while that I just couldn't do it. Um, So I didn't see that. But from the trailers and from what 
others who have seen it told me, it pretty much follows the same exact storyline that X-Men 3 The Last Stand does. So I'm just going to go based on The Last Stand. And she was so destructive. She freaking uh, disintegrates Scott. <laughs> like, poor Cyclops gets, like, vaporized pretty much, I, I if I remember oh, correctly. Well, she does that, too. She does that, too. But at the beginning of the movie, I remember at the because I remember in the second X-Men, you thought that Jean Grey died. So then Scott, you know, because they were lovers, like wallows in his own sadness out to the lake. And then she kind of like emerges from the lake and he's like, oh, my God, my boo thing is she's back. And then she kills him. So then she goes on this insane rampage. She kills, she like freaking destroys a whole neighborhood. And as you said just now, she freaking kills Xavier. Pretty much like disintegrates him easily too. Um, and then I remember at the last like battle, pretty much she freaking like just causes like nonstop like mayhem and destruction around her. That's like threatening to rip apart the very fabric of reality and she's like has to beg Wolverine pretty much to kill her uh, which you know of course Wolverine had a huge crush on Jean Grey so that was like really bad for him there's Wolverine going oh she killed off my ultimate competition <laughs> for uh, uh, Xavier's like Jean Grey must be stopped why she killed Scott I see that as an absolute win <laughs> <laughs> an absolute win that's from, oh that's from uh, the Hulk says that right <laughs> in Endgame when they're trying to do the the uh, time travel and Scott Scott Lang keeps coming back as like a baby, an old man, a teenager, and he's like, and Hulk is like, I see this as an absolute win. <laughs> oh my god, he's the worst. <laughs> but Brittany, um, I don't know if you ever saw X Men: The Last Stand or if you happen to see the recent horrible Dark Phoenix, but you know, what do you think about uh, Jean Grey and Phoenix being pretty much, like, insanely destructive? See, for me on that, like, I remember being horrified as a child because I was so obsessed with X-Men, especially that scene when, uh, with Magneto and everything, like, with the, uh, she's not one of us anymore. Oh. So I was wait, wait, can the- I, can I quick pause for a second? Or remember what you were going to say. Um, freaking! I remember talking about that movie and that whole franchise with like Juwan and everyone not too long ago, and they were like hating on it, and I was, and they hated on the fact that like Mystique got turned like quote unquote normal, and I was like, I loved that scene for that very line that Magneto delivered. Oh, she's not one of us anymore. No, I was dying. I was dying. But, um, <laughs> die. but what gets me is, like, <sighs> I, I, what I, was saying, as a kid, you know, when that happened and everything, I was so obsessed with the movie, so obsessed with mutants. One of my first, like, you know, brainstorming myself for, like, anything, like, fan fiction-wise was X-Men. And so, for me, and then watching, you know, Jean Grey Phoenix, you know, basically murderize all my favorite characters i was just sitting there stunned i was like uh, <laughs> mr stark i don't feel so good <laughs> yeah like the- no absolutely i just <laughs> i remember sitting there too like is she really doing this She's really freaking annihilating everyone. She's, like, annihilating everyone to the point where, like, Magneto is, like, oh, shit. And my thing was, like, you know, everyone, like, in that movie, you find, that's when you find out that Professor X had put those um, blockers pretty much in her mind. And Magneto expresses how, you know, they had both gone to see her as a child and they disagreed with how to best handle her. And then Wolverine is mad at Xavier because pretty much like, you know, she hasn't had 
her own free will pretty much this whole time. But Xavier, like, explains, you know, I mean, this was going to consume her and it would have happened a lot sooner if I hadn't done this. And it's like, we saw that this is what happens when Jean Grey turns into Phoenix. Which, the whole subject of the Phoenix always confuses me. Because they have, like, okay, um... You know, one thing that even the cartoons talked about is that a lot of mutants go through evolutions of their powers, that the older they get, the the stronger they get, or they get kind of like a new version of it, kind of like uh, Cyclops. There was a version of him in the future, and he didn't need the glasses anymore. He had, like, learned to turn it off and on by will, right, or make it more powerful. And I always thought that was cool. Which, by the way, he has a brother that has laser powers, but I can't remember how his powers work. Mm-hmm. But, so there's that. And then, you know, it. I'm trying to think of the point I'm trying to make about, like, Jean Grey and everything. Uh, going, I'm trying to think. I got confused by the Cyclops part. Uh, <laughs> evolution, evolution of the powers, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Jean Grey. Oh, okay, so, you know, you think, oh, her getting more powerful, but then you throw in a cosmic entity like the Phoenix that gets a host. That confused me. Because the Phoenix is a, an evolution of her powers, unless, that, like, like normally what it is is that uh, the Phoenix is like a cosmic entity that ha- is formless that takes on a host, like a powerful host. And that's why they start turning into something other than themselves and why she did things like killing, you know, like Cyclops and everything because it kind of, like, takes over her mind so i that always confused me now if they said hey her powers just got way out of hand buddy like you know uh it kind of made her go mad that would make more sense to me but the phoenix in its own right always confuses me well yeah because um i i don't even remember that part (laughs) you just stumped me there i don't even remember that part about the whole thing um, but I do feel like maybe they explored it in the new one just because I do remember scenes from the trailer kind of um, alluding to the fact that they go to space at some point. So you could, you know, you're probably right. Um, I don't know why it wasn't just an evolution of her powers that she just went insane unless they thought because, you know, uh, Phoenix and Wanda are both uh Marvel characters and both technically X-Men even though she's not in the MCU so maybe they just and since they explored a whole House of M thing with Wanda maybe they thought that that was too similar between Wanda and Phoenix like oh how can we both have these two characters who are essentially telekinetic um, both kind of going insane and going on like a ravenous rampage so I don't know w- what the reasoning is for that. I You would just blow my mind. I'm sorry. I didn't even, like, remember the whole thing about an alien entity. She gets a... Uh, by the way, can you hear me okay? I can. Yeah. Uh, she gets possessed by the Phoenix Force. It says it's one of the oldest known cosmic entities representing life that has not yet been born, as well as the forces of creation and destruction. The Phoenix Force is an immortal, indestructible, and mutable manifestation of the prime universal force of life. Well, shit. Sure. Hey. <laughs> there you go, Tia. Well- what is she like? Uh, Venom, pretty much. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and he said it's like fire, right? It's like a fire cosmic entity. So it's cool to you. It's cool. Wow, wow. But um, yeah. I again, like, it's been a really long time since I've seen the the uh, the third X Men. Um, so I don't remember say a whole lot, but I do remember just like how powerful she was and how much destruction she was causing throughout that whole movie to the point where like both, you know, X-Men and the Brotherhood were just like, what the fuck do we do? (laughs) Right. Like you think about it, like what I did think was neat about that, especially as a kid, though, was 
watching a hero become a villain. Like, mm-hmm. for me to see... Because Jean Grey was always nice, right? And mm-hmm. kind. And just, like, a sweet human being. And to watch her, like, murderize everyone, I was like, oh. Oh, um, this is happening. Okay. <laughs> I, I definitely... I don't know if I particularly liked it at the time, just because, as you said, Jean Grey was such a, like, wholesome, uh, warm figure in the X-Men universe and how much she meant to both Scott and how much she meant to Wolverine and how she essentially, like, you know, when you think of X-Men, right, you got, like, you got the big ones. You have Professor X, Wolverine, Cyclops, Storm, um, and of course, Jean Grey, like she's one of the top ones. And so for it to kind of be like seeing her go on this rampage where, you know, Wolverine has to kill her, it's like, wow. But I I wasn't mad at it, you know, as a kid, because I think at the time you were led to believe that that was going to be like the last of it. You know, it was called The Last Stand. And back then, like, you know, only like trilogies were done and shit pretty much so you thought like okay yeah exactly so it's like you know it's like okay this is you know a way to bookend the story and then they decided to redo it back in 2019 i swear the trailers if you watch the trailers for dark phoenix i was watching it and i'm like did they just redo the last stand with different actors it makes no sense like at this point you've it's gotten to the point where, like, really dedicated comic book fans don't ever want to see the Dark Phoenix storyline played out in front of their eyes again. It's overused. It's overused. You could have brought in Galactus or any other, like, or or so many other things. Like, it, like Logan was good because you just had, uh, what's his name, Pierce? Donald Pierce. Pierce. Yeah, Donald Pierce. You had him in and everything, and that was a neat storyline, like with uh, like the degenerative brain yeah. disease and like the like the clones that are like the children of these uh, past X Men and all that cool stuff. But I'm tired of seeing the Phoenix. I'm tired of it. They, people just want to see hot women kill people. Okay. <laughs> maybe maybe i don't know who say the next because you know you think about it it's like this this past like um 10 years has been like the infinity saga the you know all these movies have had like you know that they're separate stories but have all kind of been working towards like the big bad is going to be thanos it's like and now we're like oh things don't feel you know they're all going to still like live in the same world but where's the next thing but i think about it that you know we're sitting here not knowing but we didn't know back then when the first iron man came out when the first thor came out when the first cat we didn't know that like everything was leading up to thanos so i'm like all right they know like kevin feige knows we just don't know so who knows it could be galactus i mean he would be a pretty big entity for the mcu to be working towards there's too many bad characters tia too many but Brittany, let's get down to the top two it is your it is the number two on the list but of course it's your number one and i'm so excited to hear what you got for us I'm going to say, uh, my last little bit of the boys was the Homelander. Yes! The the worst, quote-unquote, good guy ever. (laughs) I know! That's what kills me. It's like, technically, technically, he's a hero that is a villain? A villainous hero? What would you call him? Technically, technically, this list is top 10 destructive superheroes, and as they call him, he is a soup. He is a superhero, Tia. Well, I'm he's stay supposed quiet. to be... He, no, 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 I agree 100% because he's supposed to be, like, the ultimate superhero, like, the world's, you know, superhero, but pretty much he's just a horrible human being living under the facade of a superhero. To me, you know, there has been... a uh, versions of superman that are evil right Mm -hmm. or say if his uh 
his pod or, you know, the escape pod as a child would have landed in the Soviet Union instead of landing, say, in a, like, where, where was he from? Kansas? Kansas. Kansas. But in the Red Sun. Yeah, yeah, in the Red Sun. That's where he came from. So what gets me is that, like, take Superman and have him have, like, no interest in human life and, like, think that it's hilarious because okay that scene and i know like the one we're going to talk about that like makes us sick is you have what was it a senator or like i try to remember who it was oh, yeah, but him, yeah. him and his son like on the plane and the little kids like looking outside and he's like oh it's the homelander and the dad's like oh yeah i wonder where he's going and he just kind of waves and then kills them like the 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 terror I felt as I watched, I was like, oh, okay. I mean, I knew this was going to be fucked up. But, you know, I should have known from, like, the A train running through a lady. But I didn't expect that, like, because, you know, a lot of shows a veer away from, like, child death in them. Yeah. You know, it can be alluded to, kind of like with the Punisher. You know, you just hear about, like, what happened to his kids, right? Yeah. And your gut wrench. But to actually watch a scene where you go, oh, everybody on that plane died. And a child just was literally excited to see the Homelander. And who even just waved, like, oh, hello. You know, like, nothing was wrong. And his weird, like, mother fetish was super oh, creepy, no. by the way. When he uses his, like, x-ray vision to, like, look through, like, that to me was so disgusting. But... As for destructive in his own right, like, you take, like I said, like, having someone with, like, Superman's powers and knowing what they can do with them and how easily he can kill. Who did, else did he kill? I'm trying to think who else he uh, he murderized. So many. So, so many. So, no. But he gets uh, a he... on that lady that he, like, has the weird mother fetish with. I think he killed the infant, too. Um, I think the infant ends up dying in, like, the house explosion or something. Yeah. And freaking, he, he ends up, like, pretty much disintegrating freaking that woman's face off. Yeah, like, no, no joke. He is terrifying. I do not like him. Like, just knowing the, like, what he could do makes him destructive in his own right. And, like, what scares me is, like, He's almost so unhinged, like, so dangerous, that I'm just sitting there like, this is not fine. This isn't fine at all. Um, like, whenever he doesn't, he it basically he's like a test tube baby, and he's sitting there, like, trying to, like, you know, he's supposed to, like, talk about this family he had, and none of them, you know, he's like, how am I supposed to make, I don't even know who these people are, you know, oh, and yeah. uh, like, nothing about that blanket. That he said, who who said that they could bring the blank? And he was, like, coming, like, pretty crazy about it. I was like, mm, it's going to be a no for me, dog. He was so sadistic and unhinged. And I know we'll talk about the creme de la creme with the Homelander. But I do want to say beforehand, um, who who was the woman, the, uh, like, you know, the... You know, all of the characters, right, are, like, knockoffs of other superheroes. So, Homelander's obviously a knockoff of Superman. And there's that one woman who's literally a knockoff of Wonder Woman. Yeah. Um, you know what I'm talking about. But obviously, it's like, okay, they dated at some point, right? But they're not together at this moment. But he pretty much, like... In that one scene where they're at the racetrack for A-Train to go up against the other guy, and they're waving at the crowd, and he's like, you look so good right now. He's, she's like, okay, uh-huh, and he's like, we should be back together. He's like, we're gonna be back together, and I was like, just that alone, because you're like, you know that like Homelander will do whatever he it takes to get what he wants, you know? And like, he will, if he wants to be back together with her... Even though she, even though I think she's the only one who kind of like can call him out on his shit a little, and the only one who gets away with like speaking to him, you know, without fear, I think there's still that level of fear um, there 
you know, not maybe so much that he could hurt her, um, but a fear that he could, like, sabotage her in the public eye, you know? Like, what gets me with that scene is it kind of almost alludes that he's the one that left, but then he's the one wanting her back, like, and she's like, oh, you know, we both agreed it was, you know, for the best not to be together, and he's like, oh, we're gonna do it together. Yeah. Definitely scary. And I think he says that, like, that he likes that she talks to him that way, but I find it so creepy. He does. He said that. He was like, you're the only one who can do that, you know? That's before this one scene where they go up and they're, like, trying to, like, I guess there's some hostage situation, and freaking oh my god do you remember that right it's like they can see i blocked that from my memory oh god what when they go there and he literally like puts his freaking fist through the guy's chest or something and then they have to make it look like there was a struggle and so they had to like hit each other to make it look like that so that there was some sort of justification for homelander literally ripping this dude's heart out of his chest I was thinking of the plane scene where oh, he, like, I, I, I know you're... like, her beams through the flight thing, like, uh, in that situation, and all, the, and she's like, we could save this, you know, at least the mother and child, and he's like, no, you know, we, we can't just do that. I knew we were going to talk about that one. Like, I was like, are we ready? Are we ready to talk about the plane scene? <laughs> I literally blocked that one from my mind, yeah, like. <laughs> Oh, so, like, so Brittany, I think, did you finish the boys before me or you just got further than me at some point? But yeah, you had seen at some point. Yeah. So Brittany was like, Tia, Tia, there's a scene. And I was like, you know, nothing seems to like, I mean, it's crazy and I love every second of it. I'm like, but nothing seems too extreme. And when that scene happened, like, I'm telling you, I have gone back and rewatched The Boys, but I skip through that every time. It is so, like, I don't even know how to describe it. It took me out of my body for a second how they did that. It's panic-inducing. I think, like, one thing for me, and I know especially for you, is, you know, we were kids when 9-11 happened, and that shaped so much of, like, our childhood and adulthood that the whole, like, plane terror, like, knowing what people must have felt like, like, it start that part of it just even being a plane and watching it go down and people be terrified, it strikes such a nerve in that direction that, like, it skews me out. Like, I do not like it. Like, you can have, like, a building, like, you know, something happened that or people get shot but that doesn't bother me as badly as watching say something like with the plane happen like i I think it's just deep rooted because it's like there's nothing they can do right it's like you're faced with that whole you haven't so it's like they go up there because it's like they're supposed to help and they're supposed to save. And it's like, oh, yay, Homelander. And I forget her freaking name, you know. And it's like, Homelander and blah, blah, blah are here. You know, we're saved. And it's like them realizing that there's nothing that they can do. And I remember at some point she was like, can't you just catch the plane? And he's like, catch the plane. Which also kind of, like, commented on the ridiculousness of, like, Superman or something. you know, yeah. Or anything. Like, but he's like, I can't do that. Like, and she's like... Well, just take everyone, you know, like, can't you just go back and forth, you know, blah, 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 because she can't fly. And he's like, and he even says to her at some point, he's like, don't stay here and die with them, you know. And um, the, <laughs> I know this is not funny, but Paulie always thinks that it's funny. The scene where, <laughs> you know, the one guy like, go, and he's like, get back or I'll laser every single one of you motherfuckers. <laughs> and it's like, oh, you know. Terrifying. Like. The way that they force them back on the plane and, like, you even watch it crash and you hear them scream as it goes, like, that I do not like. Well, and it's just so crazy because it's, like, again, they thought their salvation was there and then they were all, like, forced to sit back and, like, accept the fact. And the fa- as you said, you know, like, child death isn't something that you often see in, like, shows. They always somehow, you know, make the exception for the children. And it's like, you think, okay, maybe they'll just save the kid. Like, just save the kid. And it's like, no, 
you know the kid's going to die. You know, and then what was crazy was that afterwards, pretty much Homelander was like patting himself on the back afterwards saying, you know, this is why uh, we need, you know, superheroes everywhere, because if we had known about this sooner, you know, we those those poor people would still be alive. And it's like problem. He, he lasered through the, the pilot pool, like the, the, uh, yeah. the controls. That was the fucked up part because he had to be so overzealous in how he was going to take... It's like, you're on a plane. Why did you think using your laser eyes was a good idea in that moment? Yeah. He... Yeah. (laughs) It's going to be me, dog. I completely forgot about this scene. I hate it. By the way, her name is Queen Maeve. It was going to bother me if I didn't know her name. Yeah, Queen yeah, Maeve. Yeah, yeah, she say the name, I'm like, yeah, that that's it. That's it. Yeah, freaking Homelander is just so destructive throughout that whole entire thing. And if I'm not mistaken, because it has been a little while since I've revisited it, I should probably rewatch it before the second season comes out just to, like give myself a refresher course and that's going to be your homework as well Brittany, so that we can watch the second season and talk about it together on the show um but freaking um does isn't he the one who takes the serum to other countries to create supervillains because he's pretty much like if you're gonna have superheroes you're gonna need supervillains like because (laughs) What was her name? The 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 girl that uh, was all hyped up on the serum. Like it was a terrorist group. Yeah, it was a terrorist group. He gave it to them because if you remember, these superheroes were all like you know controlled by a company, and so yeah, they were the superheroes, but they were never going up against other powered people. They were going up against like regular shit. And so it's like they're trying to get the whole world on board with having superheroes because right now it's like strictly an American thing. But it's like if they create supervillains, that's that's going. Uh, what is it? Um, uh, create the virus, create the cure, you know, type thing. Yeah. So it's like he full on. I I believe he's the one who did that. So it's like, how destructive are you? Now you're giving terrorists uh, abilities. <laughs> you now what? That's fair enough. That that's fair in its own right. He he can be destructive even from a mentality standpoint. He's the ultimate destructor. Like he is. Uh, it's crazy that in this like world it's like the superheroes are the bad guys you know and freaking carl urban's character is like fuck them <laughs> right by the way he's hilarious i love him i oh god i love him too i forget sometimes that he played um oh god uh the doctor in in uh in star trek bones Oh, I didn't. I forgot about that. And it's yeah. always from, isn't his face distinctive? Because it doesn't have like a mole. He has a bit of a distinctive face. You know who he also he has was. Distinctive face, but I think he has like a beauty mark. Um, doesn't look it. I'm looking at a picture. Wait, what is oh, that about his face? What's his Go name again? Carl Urban. <laughs> This is a very important moment for us guys to to, to look this up right now, okay? It's important. <laughs> Boy, I can't find him. Kyle Irving. Carl Urban. Carl, I knew that. I knew that. Um, Don't worry, I'm sending it to you. It's think, uploading. Think, thanks, BB. <laughs> go look at your phone now. On air, go look at your phone. I'm trying to find it. Wait, there he is. No, wait, what is it? There's something about his face. I thought he had a beauty mark. Mm. There it is. I see it. I see it. On his cheek? Yeah. That's so little. Sorry, everyone, about this. (laughs) 
there was something because uh, I remember like I always fixate on like little points of the face and I always see it. I wasn't crazy to you. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Before we move on, really quick, you know who he also played? He is actually in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. What does he play? Scourge. No. No. I got, no, I got, no, it's not. I, it's not. You're a liar. I got, I got these two things from a place on Midgard called Texas. Dis and destroy when you put them together. They destroy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go crawl under this mattress, okay? <laughs> I just think that's hilarious. Like, <laughs> they scourge. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> you, you love ruined this for me. You ruin this for me. He doesn't even look like himself as scourge. I know. I think it's hilarious. I love it. I I didn't realize that at first either until, like, I was looking back and they're like, oh, Carl Urban, you know, Marvel star, blah, blah. And I was like, Marvel? Where? And I looked at I was like, oh, shit. Because I've never seen him bald before. I know. I had never seen him bald either. Jesus I Christ. Sent, yeah. I sent it to you again. Go look it up. Go look Carl. at it. Look oh, at it. No. Are you looking no. at it? Oh. No. <laughs> no. He's like, that's like a dollar store version of him. <laughs> oh my god. I believe. I refuse to believe. All right, well, we got one more on this list, and I think it's been a great list of the top ten most destructive superheroes. And we'll go through the list before we get to the number one. We have Tony Stark, The Punisher, A-Train, Hulk, Professor X, Scarlet Witch, Batman, Phoenix, Homelander, and I'm going to take the number one. I feel like my pick is kind of bouncing off of yours a little because they're essentially like you know one is supposed to be a spoof of the other and so I'm going to pick I'm picking Superman Um, (laughs) I feel like in all capacities of Superman he is pretty freaking destructive when you have so anything that Homelander is Superman is, you know, man of steel, strong as shit, uh, freaking bulletproof, laser eyes, can fly, can see through walls, can all of that shit. Like a tornado. Yeah, yeah. Like a it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, the amount of shit that he is able to do it, that we've seen in comic book form, animated form, live action form is insane. I mean, he can literally... <laughs> Think about it. Okay, I don't remember which movie it was, but it was a bit of an older movie. I think it was like a Christopher Reeves movie. But he was literally able to turn time around by spinning the earth. By spinning the earth, he I was able to do that. Yeah, that's insane. Um, and we've always seen how powerful he is. We've always seen how destructive he is. But I'm even going to take it into a, say, live action capacity of the Zack Snyder universe. Um, even in the first Man of Steel, taking down Zod. I mean, he freaking snaps his neck, which, you know, you I'll reserve my criticism, I guess, of that. But, you know, still able to do it. Um, and even though I hate Batman versus Superman, he is essentially destroying an entire city, which is the cause of why Batman hates Superman. Um, oh, and then, and, and your man, and your man, girl, you scoot, my scoot, scoot. Um, and even in the god awful Justice League, he takes on the entire Justice League. And pretty much, I feel like if this was a like darker version of the movie, he could have killed them easily, which would have kind of been entertaining. I'm just saying. I but sleep the movie. I still haven't finished it. Yeah, 
well, it was terrible. There was nothing that you missed. But um, Superman, to me, again, anything that we talked about, like, with Homelander that he can do, Superman can do as well. The shit that he is able to do uh, with his powers, like, he could easily destroy... And I think that was something that was posed in one of the movies. Like, what happens if he just decided that he didn't like us anymore? And it's like, he could destroy the entire planet. And with little to no effort as well. He is literally, like, the strongest individual. And he's kind of, like, very OP. His only thing is the kryptonite. But if it's not for the kryptonite, I, what what is hurting him? As you said... He couldn't, e- there couldn't even, you couldn't even perform surgery on him to get the freaking kryptonite bullet out. Which, by the way, reminds me of the first season of Luke Cage, when Luke Cage got shot by uh, one of those, like, alien-made freaking bullets. bullets. Yes, yeah. The Chitauri bullets, and they couldn't even tr- really perform surgery on him because his skin was too strong. They had to do all this other crazy shit. But, yeah. So, Superman is going to be my number one. No, I like that one, especially because you saw what happened with Scoot, that he ended up getting, uh, he got paralyzed from that, didn't he? His character in the movie? They had, they had to cut his legs off. That oh, was his yeah, thing. yeah. But, like, what gets me, so you have that. You have that he snapped uh, Zod's neck. Because he was going to laser uh, th- that whole family that was, like, in the corner. I, was it, like, a museum or something? Uh, I enough like that, it was that thing. Yeah, it was something. I can't remember. And then, um, but, yeah, the destructive force, if necessary, like, the, like, the Justice League was no match for him. Like, nothing at all. And you think about, like, you know what kills me, too? Something I don't like is when they do, like, oh, who'd be faster, the Flash or Superman? Yeah. You can't let Superman always be, like, the one-all be-all. You know, like, oh, the, the speed thing is Flash's thing, right? You can't just have where Superman can outrun him or outfly him. I don't like that. But in some instances, they make it where Superman wins. I don't like it. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you are right, because it's like, you know, the Flash's thing is being the fastest man alive. Like, what do they need the Flash for if they have Superman who can run equally as fast? I will say, though, as shitty as Justice League was, I do think that it was a pretty cool uh, scene where they're all getting on him after he, like, got resurrected and... You know, the Flash is trying to get around him because he's so fast. And you see the Superman, like, turning his head to look at Flash because it's like he can see how fast he's going. So it's like, okay, if this was a better movie and you had a better Flash, like, I could dig that. But because that's my thing. I have no problem with Henry Cavill as Superman. I love Henry Cavill. Like, him is... He has the jawline for it. Him in Mission Impossible and him in The Witcher is, like, sex. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. The obsession begins. I've been obsessed with Henry Cavill. (laughs) Like, his his Superman deserves a better quality of movie. Like, and he wants to still play Superman. So I'm like, get a better director, get a better direction, and freaking put him back in the suit. But like, I just... The entire, like, thing. Get a... You know, the Fantastic Four already got two do-overs. You can do over uh, DC. <laughs> I think they pretty much are. I mean, besides Wonder Woman and Aquaman, you don't really... And, like, Suicide Squad, but even them are, like, revamping themselves. Besides that, yeah. you really don't have... Get a different What'd you say? I hate the Flash. I hate the Flash. I tell this all the time to Juwan, and I think I'm starting to get him to see eye to eye with me on it, because there's been so much, like, controversy behind the Flash movie that it's just, like, at this point, what the hell? Um, You know who Juwan suggested as a Flash, and I kind of agree with him? Who? The guy who plays Huey from The Boys. 
See, he would be good. He would be good. I also like the guy from Shameless, the redhead that plays the Joker. Oh, and, yeah, he would be good, he Cameron. Would be good Barry, yeah, he would be a good, like, Barry Allen. Oh, I like that. See, so if you want to do, like, a Barry Allen, you could get him. Yeah. Yeah, like, I think he would be great. Yeah, anything is better than Ezra Miller. I don't care how that sounds. I do not like Ezra Miller as Barry Allen. He is not Barry Allen. It, he, and it's not, awkwardly. he plays him like a very awkward, like, teenager. I don't think, and I'm going to say this on air, and I don't care how it sounds. Zack Snyder doesn't know how to do a character unless it's Batman or Superman. Because it's like... Frickin', he has his Flash act the same exact way that he had his Lex Luthor do. How does that make sense? How Lex Luthor and Flash are, how are they the same exact character? Makes no sense at all. I do not like Ezra Miller as the Flash. I don't like what he did at all with that character. Um, and I haven't seen enough of Ezra Miller to say if he's a good actor or not. He's a very eccentric person in real life. Um, so I just don't know. But, freaking, I would not want him to be Flash anymore. But I, I do agree with you, Brittany, I'm sorry, that you shouldn't have Superman, like, winning out against all these other people because, like, that's their thing. But I just think that Superman is probably the most destructive superhero within the DC comics. And I don't know who really is Superman, say, equal in Marvel, at least in the live action retrospect, Thor, maybe? Maybe, yeah. Which, by the way, really quick, the Flash and Superman with the whole, like, who's the fastest makes me think of the song Jolene, but it's like with speed, it's like, please don't take my man, except <laughs> like, oh, my the fastest man. Hashtag confession time. Um, I love that song, especially the Miley Cyrus version. Yeah, I love that song too. I heard it like uh, at work since we're always like running around and stuff. The people will play music in the the main part of our department, and uh, that song came on, and I was like, I got this song stuck in my head. Also, <laughs> I have a coworker named Jenny, and I always go, I'm still Jenny from the block, and I get that song oh, stuck God. in my head too. I can't let you. But, Brittany, we did an amazing job breaking down all these destructive-ass superheroes. It's like, thanks for saving us, guys, but also stop crashing into our buildings. Um, (laughs) I was wondering uh, if you had any honorable mentions. Uh, Let me see if I had anybody left on my list for... I had... Nope, that was all of them. Um, I guess Captain Marvel, because we saw, uh, it, like, we'll be back for the weapon. <laughs> the, the, uh, the, the Tesseract. Yeah, uh, <laughs> what was it? Like, the, uh... He, he was like, the core, and he was like, the woman. But it was the Tesseract, that's what they were talking I mean, about. We saw what she did to, like, the ships, like, the, uh, Thanos army ship. Like, she just flew straight through it. She did the th- same thing to Ronan's ship. Like, or, like, what did she do? Like, blast it or something and just, like, made eye contact with him. <laughs> I was like, she's pretty OP. Like, she's pretty fucking destructive. Like, I was... wants to be I had Captain Marvel on my list as well, and I was talking about that earlier today. I was like, it's an end... Because people will say, like, oh, what did Captain Marvel do in Endgame? Nothing. And I'm like, she destroyed a ship. I'm like, did anyone else destroy a ship? Because she destroyed that ship. Um, (laughs) No, just her. Just her. Uh, Really quick, I actually also had Thor on my list. Um, I had Wonder Woman, Venom... I also had Jessica Jones and Luke Cage because not only was Jessica Jones self-destructive, she was killing, like, everyone in season two. So I'm like, that's pretty destructive. But, yeah. So I think we did a great job with this list. I actually really loved it. had a fantastic time. Um, And anyone who's listening, please make sure that you tell us what your – who you think is, like, 
one of the most destructive superheroes out there. Uh, you can also, you, you know, of course, can find us uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Geek Vibes Nation. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram, Tia Faby. I'm always there. So anything that you'd like to share with us, or even if you guys have a suggestion as to what we should do for our next top ten, although I'm pretty sure next week we're going to do the Christoph Waltz one. But Brittany, please let everyone know where we can find you, and what are you playing? I was going to say, you can always find me on Twitch at Itty Bitty Brit. I've been playing Star Wars The Fallen Order. That's why I was thinking about the guy from Shameless, because he's actually the face and body model of the main character in that game, and it's really good, and the voice actor for it. And I was like, man, he's pretty incredible. Like, he's very, very cool. But uh, I've been doing that. I played some Sea of Thieves the other day. I got bullied by my crewmates. Uh, I am. I still refuse to believe that I am not the captain. I am the captain of that ship. Uh, you can find me at Twitter at itty-bitty-brit-0. I do run a lot of polls there to figure out what I'm going to play next or just, like, general little perler art that I've been making. But, yeah, we have a great time there uh, with the Itty Bitty Britty Committee, which, please try to say that five times fast. It is impossible. But, yeah, that's where you can find me. Itty Bitty Britty. No, I can't even say it once. <laughs> itty Bitty Britty Committee. Um, but yes, please everyone make sure that you check that out. I, I like the guy Cameron. Um, I never got to watch Gotham, but I saw kind of like clips and shit of his Joker and I thought that he did a really good job with it. Um, that was impressive and he's a young actor, so it is cool that he is so wildly talented for being so young. And I think that if we wanted to get a Barry Allen, he could probably do it. So I, I 100% support that. But yes, everyone. Thank you so much for checking out our top 10. As always, we appreciate it. And we will be back next weekend to give you more awesome goodness, if that makes sense. So, Brittany, thank you again for joining me. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Have a good day.